Well, let me tell you something, brother. Snort, snort, snort. Tell you. Drip, snort, snort. I got the drip. Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to something completely unplanned, and I'm not too happy about it, to be quite frank. Uh, it's actually Tuesday, the 23rd of April, 2024, and this is my typical late-night stream where I would have something interesting for you, whether it be gameplay or a special event or something. Uh, tonight, particularly, on deck, on schedule here, was something fresh and different and new, something that people had literally requested from me, built up in, in hype for me. For many, 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 many years. All right. Tonight, what I was supposed to do is I was supposed to check out something called Fightcade on PC. For those who don't know, Fightcade is a third party, not branded to any particular company or anything, application that runs on PC. And what it does is it combines emulator suites, so different versions of, of gaming emulators, with the online capabilities of the GGPO rollback netcode to create a product that allows you to match up with people from all over the globe and play games for free on your PC over the internet. Particularly one-on-one -on -one fighting games from yesteryear that aren't really readily available to play in any modern capacity at all. For the most part, what Fightcade was originally designed to do was posterity, meaning allow people to access games that can no longer be actively played in arcades because they don't exist anymore, or on home consoles because there's just no ports that really are viable to play. In this case, I'm talking about the era of CPS1, CPS2 uh, games, the, the uh, CPS3 games such as the Street Fighter 3 series, etc. Those games particularly are what Fightcade was really designed to emulate. Now, for them to understand, there's been other things that have been added over the years. <clears throat> but this is like the way that people in the fighting game community play against each other to play old school fighting games. Particularly for me, I was stoked because my favorite fighting game of all time is Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo. There is currently no real active way to play that game on a console. The two versions that are readily available are the Street Fighter 30th Anniversary Collection, which is completely busted. Uh, there's no way to moderate and make it so that trolling doesn't happen and people have found ways to break the game because it's just not a very good version. And the Capcom Fighting Collection, which actually doesn't run too poorly, but no one bought it. So because of that, there's no one playing this game in that collection. So really, if you own a console, you're bone. You can't play Super Turbo, okay? Um, other games that I love, Street Fighter 3 Third Strike, ver versions of the Alpha series. Like, hell, I would play any of the three Alphas, although Alpha 2 is my favorite. I would play 1, 2, or 3. Um, the Versus series of games. For example, X-Men vs. Street Fighter or Marvel vs. Capcom. I love those games. I was quite good at those games back in the day. I would be super happy to play those games with actual competition and people who know what they're doing and play them across the globe. That would be sweet. But here's the deal. Years and years and years, people have asked me to do this, to play Fight Cave. I never really had, in the last decade, the capability of doing so because I capture, stream, and do everything on one PC. I don't have a dual PC setup where I can run a game on one PC and then have that feed go into the other PC for capture and streaming. It's all on one PC, okay? So there was no way, <clears throat> excuse me, that I was going to be able to do Fight K until I had some kind of a solution for this, all right? So now I do. Last year, a viewer donated a mini PC, and we played a few things on it. Like, I played Chrono Trigger on PC, uh, we actually tried out like Phasmophobia I mean, during a Christmas holiday and stuff like that. We've done a few little things on it. But the whole idea was that eventually we were going to play Fightcade on there. That was the big epic thing. And I said, let's just find the time to do it. And now's the perfect time. We actually have three freaking weeks until there's major new releases that I'm interested in. So I'm like, oh, this would be perfect for us to set it up, get it in a rotation, and be playing all these cool classic fighters and all this stuff. And that's what the purpose of tonight was supposed to be. Right now... We were supposed to set this up so that we could do it together and start playing, like pick games and stuff and start trying it out, right? So, no exaggeration. Ten years since I lived in Washington, I've been streaming classic fighting games on console and been told, oh, Ultra Street Fighter 2, that's the wrong way to do it. It's crap. Street Fighter 30th Anniversary Collection, you're doing it the wrong way. It's crap. Oh, Capcom Fighting Collection, oh, that's crap. You're, you're dodging the competition. You're not playing the good players. This is all your fault. All you need to do is play Fight Cave, okay? 
<clears throat> so now I have the capability to do it. And that was tonight. And then this morning on my level one podcast in the morning, I'm discussing this with the with the crowd live, with the with the audience. You know, good good crowd this morning, by the way. And I want to say thank you to anyone who was there because there were some good Samaritans. Let me tell you, there were some good Samaritans there this morning. Holy moly. Um, and I, want, I, I do want to say one thing before we actually even go much further. I got the weirdest message during the break. I got an email from someone who was like, I'm so upset with you because you attacked me today on the podcast and you insulted me and I want an apology. And I was like, I'm reading the message, right? And I'm looking and I'm like, that literally didn't happen. Like, I think what happened was someone was being very stupid in the chat at one point about, like, being a jerk to me. And I responded to them, but I didn't say a name. And someone else must have mis misconstrued it as I was singling them out in the chat. The thing is, this person was not moderated. I did not call them out by name. Somehow, they 100% misunderstood who I was talking to. So I'm just going to say this to anyone who attends my content or my streams. This is something that I should air out. Um, basically, if you think that I'm directly addressing you, you should probably ask me um, and make sure that it's I, I am. But the truth is that usually if I am addressing someone directly, like a, a person directly in the chat, I will tell you, like, you're messing around, you know, don't do that. Or I will call you out. I will moderate. I'm not in general just attacking people for no reason in my chat they're always doing something stupid that allows me to then have to basically do something about it you know what i'm saying um but yeah like someone completely misunderstood or mis misconstrued what happened and took it as a personal insult i mean obviously i apologize to whoever that person is if they actually thought i was insulting them i wasn't talking to them at all in fact i don't even know what they said in chat because i was talking totally to somebody else <laughs> so but be careful you got to be careful about this guys and here's why i'm one person you are many right right now we have a chat of hundreds of people i do my best to talk with you and, and have conversation or whatever but i can't basically be perfect all the time and be clear exactly who i'm addressing right now i'm talking to everyone generally right don't take it to heart. If I say something on stream and you get upset, did he say that to me? Did I? Well, if I did, I would have said your name and I would have moderated you if I felt that you broke the chat rules. If I didn't do that, then I wasn't talking to you, right? So I actually feel like uh, that like some people, they take it the wrong way or whatever. I'm not, like, I'm literally, this person, I apologize to them if they took it that way, but that was not the intention. I wasn't insulting this person whatsoever. I wasn't even responding to them talking in the chat. I don't even know what they said. So... So there you have it. Anyway, I just want to get that out of the way. Please be careful. Don't always take what I say as like I'm directly talking to you, especially if all of a sudden I'm responding to something in a chat. It doesn't mean I'm responding directly to you unless I call you out. Then you know I'm talking to you, okay? I do feel it's kind of unfair. Like I said, I'm one, you are many. If everyone takes every word I ever say as I'm talking directly to you, I guess uh, we're going to have some problems, right? Fair enough? Okay. Now getting back on subject. As we're doing the podcast this morning, the Level 1 podcast, a few good Samaritans actually came to the stream and said, hey, just so you know, it sounds like no one has ever told you this before, but when you play Fightcade, your IP address gets exposed. Now, it took us about a half an hour to hash this out, but by the end of a half an hour segment on the podcast, we kind of figured out exactly how it all works. And so here's here's how Fightcade actually works. There's a chat room. No, your information does not get exposed in the chat room, okay? There's like a client where you search for people and all you see in the client where you search for people is a geolocation. So you'll see, oh, okay, this person's located in the USA. This person is located in the UK. This person is in, you know, Mexico or whatever, right? So you at least know what country they're in. But you don't see their IP address. However, from what I'm understanding, <clears throat> Fightcade is a free program, all right? It's totally free. There is no paid version that's better, that has features. It's just something that everyone uses in the FGC for posterity to keep classic fighting games alive, which is to be well-respected and regarded 
Thank you to the people who make Fightcade for doing that. That's very nice of you to keep fighting games alive that normally wouldn't have any player base because there's no way to play them, all right? We'd be nice if we had perfect versions of these games on console. We do not, correct? Anyway, um, apparently it's peer-to-peer. -peer. What that means is there's no central server that you connect to. Instead, it's you are directly connecting to someone else. And even though you can't actively see it yourself, yes, your IP address gets exposed when you connect to someone. Now you might say, well, why is this not a big deal for anyone? Well, because normally people don't have endless armies of complete mentally challenged weirdos on the internet chasing them around trying to ruin their business and their life, but I do, okay? It's sad, it's just a crazy hate mob of weird people that follow me around to try to do this stuff, but it just it's just present. So what happens is apparently you need to have third-party things going. So for example, it wouldn't be in Fightcade, but they could do something like use an IP sniffer, which is a third-party program you can get, and it can interact with Fightcade, and it can find out the IP address of the person that you've matched against to play. So it might not happen immediately, but within you know a, a session or two, there's definitely a chance that one of these trolls... Okay. Uh that they will do this, right? One of these trolls will eventually match with me, get my IP address, and there you go. In fact, Bonos Temo says, I, if you do a Google, Google search for fight cage security issues, the sixth result is an ex post explaining everything about it. It is definitive on this issue. There's just a no-go here. So unless the, the makers of fight cage work with some other method to hide someone's IP address in the app itself, which I don't think they're going to do, it's a free app, right? They're not, maybe if they were receiving payment for this app, they could develop something that makes it foolproof, much like when you're playing these games over a console through a through a GUI or its own matchmaking system where you have no access to the backend data. But apparently you do can you can do that just easily just using an IP sniffer program. You can get the IP right out of Fight Cave. You can get someone's IP. So why isn't it a big deal for anyone else? Because no one else gets harassed like me. Everyone else just plays casually for themselves. Even a casual fighting game streamer, you know, you get a few hundred people on your stream or whatever, no one's gonna dox you. But because I'm Dark Side Phil, and people hate me for literally no good reason, they're just nuts, they will dox me. They will basically get my IP address, put it on the internet, and probably get a bunch of people to DDoS attack me. Uh, great, right? Now, before we get ahead of ourselves, because all day people have been saying, use a VPN, 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 use a VPN. We already addressed it on the podcast, but I'll readdress it now. Okay, there are services out there, VPNs, that essentially spoof your location so that you look like you're, you're somewhere else. So no one can actually find out your true IP address. Okay, so for example, I could get one of these, I know there's a bunch of them. There's NordVPN, ExpressVPN, there's like a, a ton of them that are commercially used. And you pay a subscription fee a month. And basically when you go to do anything, before you actually get to the destination you want to go. So let's say, for example, uh, I was going to stream on YouTube, but I wanted to protect my IP. Instead of connecting directly to YouTube and then streaming to YouTube, I would connect through this VPN first, then to YouTube, and YouTube would actually think that my broadcasting location was another country or another place. And apparently they have things all over the place. Like some of them are international. Some of them have several things in the United States. But the one big problem with VPNs, okay, is very, very simple. They add lag because you're not broadcasting from where you are, you're going from somewhere else. So for example, if I were to use a VPN to change my IP address, all right, so that I could play Fightcade and protect my IP, number one, it's going to add input lag to the game. In which case, why bother playing online if you're adding delay to make it lag? The other person won't have the lag. I will, <laughs> right? I'll have additional, and it's already rollback netcode. It's already rollback netcode where things are going to be going all over the place, teleporting. Now imagine that added with a VPN that's adding lag, correct? And as, as much as people want to be really optimistic about this and say, well, you can get a VPN that maybe will broadcast out of Seattle or whatever. It's absolutely ridiculous. It's going to add lag enough that it's going to make it not viable. It's gonna make it as laggy as it was on the console versions anyway. So there's no point. 
I could just play the console version, which is also broken and laggy, and there's no point. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, it's just dumb. Why would I do that? Why would I pay to get a VPN only to play on Fightcade for the few times that I will do this a month? You know, Fightcade would probably be something I would do like once a week, you know, four times a month. I'm going to do a specific subscription just to get a VPN, just to change my IP address, just to stream that one particular app four times a month and add lag and make myself miserable, right? <laughs> I just, I, it, it's insane. You know what I'm saying? And by the way, I don't even have confidence. I don't have confidence that this would even work without the VPN. What I mean by that is this is rollback netcode. I don't like rollback netcode. I think rollback netcode hides lag, hides lag from the viewer. If you're watching, it doesn't look laggy. But after the time when I'm playing a game like Street Fighter VI, my inputs are delaying and dropping. When I do them, it's not good. It's already frustrating. Now I'm going to add even additional delay to that situation using a VPN, right? And then on top of that, there's no guarantee this thing's even going to be that fun or work because, you know, it's one thing when it's just a free thing, you, you mess around with a big deal. It's another thing when you're paying a subscription service just to use the stupid thing and then it ends up being a flop or what people are on to play. It's just not worth it. There's no guarantees that a VPN would do anything to help, okay? Uh, so, basically, it's shot, it's kaput, it's off the table, and there's nothing that I can do about it. I'm sorry, I I wanted to play Fightcade for you guys. For years, you got, for years people came, I wanna say you guys, but I don't wanna say it was all of you, because who knows actually who it was. But I remember particularly as I played games like Ultra Street Fighter 2 on the Switch or the Street Fighter 30th Anniversary Collection, you know, on my Xbox or PlayStation, people would say, man, you're just stupid. Everyone who's anyone is playing Fightcade and you're dumb because you're, you're purposefully dodging the competition. That's what they would say. DSP is purposefully dodging the competition by playing on console because there's this, it's like a small pool of people who aren't good, right? Oh, if he played on PC, he'd be playing the cream of the crop, the better players, and he would be spanking or he getting spanked by everyone. Now, I'm not disputing that. The people who play on PC on Fight Cave probably play all the time. Unlike me, who I'm rusty and I play these occasionally, these are probably people who've been actively playing these games for ages and ages and ages. You know what I'm saying? Um, but yeah, like people would always come by and say, Phil. Why are you not playing the real comp? Why are you not? And so all these years, I'm thinking, you know, maybe when I finally get the the, per, the capability of doing this, I want to play Fight K. And now I have it, and I advertise it. And we talked about this for months. We talked about ever since I got the mini PC that I would do it. We said we were I was going to do it in December. Then it got delayed. Then we said January. Then it got delayed again. There was all these opportunities for you to find out about this. It wasn't until the morning that I was going to do the Fight K setup tonight that I was told that this happens. It was the morning of, during a 10 year span that everyone crapped on me saying I was a coward dodging the competition. The truth of the matter is I never would have been able to do it because it exposes my IP and it was all a lot. And thankfully it was people like Bonos Tecmo and a few others it was him and like two or three other people who were all finding the information and putting it in the chat this morning. I basically once again have dodged a huge bullet. Ladies and gentlemen, 2024 is officially the year of me dodging a million huge bullets. So far, I it's like the fucking Matrix and I'm just doing Matrix dodging like Keanu Reeves right now. All these bullets are passing me by because there were so many opportunities for bad things to happen and somehow I'm, I'm dodging them. I mean, this is good, obviously. But it definitely is frustrating that so many things, you know, are kind of not working out in a, in a positive way. I wish they did, you know. In this case, I don't like the fact that I can't play classic fighting games. I want to. Uh, this sucks that I can't, that I don't have an access to it. But others can, right? Because others don't have an army, a legion of fucking trolls after them. It's kind of like, it's very similar to the situation where people are saying... What about all these, these gifted memberships that you keep getting from trolls that you're saying, you know, they're not real? Well, they are real, but they're basically discounted because they're using an exploit. They're using a VPN. 
to pretend like they're in another country where the pricing is incorrect on memberships and then they're mass buying them for a few pennies. And so it ruins the whole membership system. It breaks it. And people are like, so why is that affecting you and not others? Because I'm Dark Side Phil and I'm the one who's stalked by literally thousands of mentally ill people who think that that's okay to do. It's okay to exploit a system as long as it hurts Phil. It's okay to skirt the rules as long as it hurts Phil. It's okay to literally break the law, which has happened to me many times over the years, people breaking the law just to hurt Phil. That's sick. There's other fighting game streamers out there literally right fucking now who are playing on Fightcade, and there are no trolls going in using IP sniffers to find their IP address post it up on the internet on Kiwi Farms and have everyone DDoS attack them. That's not happening. People even said it earlier. Avoid the Puddle is a, a prominent fighting game streamer who gets to play Fightcade all the time. And he does never have this issue whatsoever. Not once has this happened to him. He could just play it with no issue. Why? Because he doesn't have an army of weirdo, loser, mentally ill people following him around. So he can, he can have a normal life. I can't. I'm not free to have a normal life because of this. And then people idiotically say things in the chat like earlier, oh, victim complex. It's not a fucking complex, you idiot. It's documented factual shit that's happening. I'm not making it up. You say victim complex if you're actively trying to make yourself a victim for sympathy. I don't want anyone's sympathy. I just want to do the normal shit everyone else can fucking do, and I'm not allowed to. This is not a victim complex. It's my fucking reality that every place I turn, I get harassed by weirdos and losers and people who should be mentally examined for help. Because if they think this is a use of something normal in their life, they're out of their minds. They are infatuated with me and my family and they're actively trying to harass us at every turn. So, it's this simple. I'm not allowed to do the things everyone else does. Just like back when I was on Twitch, I was not allowed to have a sponsored stream because my trolls would harass whoever the sponsor was and the sponsor would demand from Twitch that I no longer get these sponsored opportunities because they don't want to be harassed by trolls. So then they kicked me out of the program and never told me. They literally lied to me about it. Outright lied and said, oh, it was a coding error. They, didn't, they weren't man enough to say, oh, we're, we're kicking you out of the program unfairly because of your trolls. They lied about it and said it was a coding error that I couldn't see the page. Yes, that's what they told me, okay? So it's just one of many, many things. It's why I can't have a merch page. Because if I have a merch page, my trolls go to the, the vendor and complain that I'm a bigot and a racist and a sexist and the king of hate and I'm a horrible person and you don't want to do business with them. So then they kick me out because they're getting harassed. You see? Not that any of this is true, but they don't care. They just don't want the hassle. So this is why I can't get the same things as everybody else. This is why when people say, well, why don't you just take on sponsors? Because I can't take on a sponsor. Even if I did, it wouldn't last because of this. Do you understand? I have to basically make a living just off of streaming. That's it. I can't get income from anywhere else because of these idiots. That's not a victim complex. That's actual reality for me because these idiots won't leave me alone. What they don't realize is all the things they don't like. So for example, they don't like it. When I go on a stream and I talk about this, they don't like it if I'm on a stream and I say, hey guys, will you contribute to support my stream tonight? Oh, he's an e-beggar. Oh, he's a victim. But I have to do that because you fucked my life up. You understand that? If you would fucking stop, if you wouldn't dox me, I could be playing Fightcade right now like everyone else who uses it. If you wouldn't fuck up sponsors, I would have had sponsors years ago and I wouldn't have been in the financial situations that I got into. You created the problem with the level of harassment you did against me, and then you complained about the consequences of the problem. Your consequences created actions for me that I couldn't avoid, and now I'm living with those repercussions of your actions, and I'm just trying to make a living, but you're not happy with that. But you created the situation. You're fucking stupid. You're the dumbest people on earth. Do you get it? You're literally the dumbest people. You created the situation you don't like. I wasn't ever having to do shit like this back in the day. When I was 10 years ago before, this is how you don't play, I just did whatever. I played games, I uploaded videos, I went on trips, I did everything. I had no issues with my income. 
So because of that, I was able to do whatever the hell I wanted. I was free. I wasn't sitting there begging people for contributions. I wasn't saying, oh, we got to have a Patreon and we got to have a PayPal and we got to have this. It was literally just, here's my videos, watch them, ad revenue. Thanks so much. Done. And I gave shit away constantly. Like, get away, giveaways every fall. All the shit behind the scenes. Hell, I used to be able to afford to give money to charity. And I did many times behind the scenes back when I actually made money to do it. But I can't anymore because people fucked with my life so much. So you created the monster. You created the situation. And now you want to hold me accountable for it when you did it. Fuck you. Fuck every one of you. Every one of you out there who acts like this and does this horrible things to me and my family. That's why I can't play fight, Kate. That's why I can't do the normal things other streamers do. It's you. You're the problem. If you don't exist right now, if you were finger snapped out of existence, things would be better. Think about that. That all you do is you sit around, you hurt people all day long, and people would probably be happier if you would just change your behavior immediately. But you won't. Because you've been doing this to me for over a decade. Right? It's just insane how they act. These fucking people. So, anyway, that's what's going on. As That's why I'm trying to express how openly disappointed I am right now with the fact that I can't play retro fighting games. I was stoked and pumped for this. You guys built this up for years that it was going to be something great. And now I can't do it. You know? And now, I mean, to be particularly honest, it just, it just sours me from wanting to do something. Like, right now, what should we do tonight? I don't fucking know. I'm not even in a mood to fucking do anything. I'm not. I'm pissed that I'm not allowed to have the things that anyone else who turns on their PC to stream can do. I'm I'm really ripping pissed. And I don't think that I should now have to fucking come up with some bullshit extravagant fallback plan because of the actions of a bunch of shitbags out there who have no fucking lives. So I don't think I'm going to do anything. I think we're just going to hang out. I'm going to talk with you guys. We have, I have some things I'm going to shout out. Thank you because a couple people have already contributed. And I want to shout these out. Okay? And I want to, to hang out. And I just kind of want, at this point, I just kind of want to unwind because I'm just upset. Like, I really, I don't even think I'm in a mood to say, oh, let's just do an impromptu stream of another game. I don't think I would even be fair to the game because I'm actually in a bad mood. And I don't think that that's fair to the game to play a game and be all pissy at the fucking game and just be upset, Mr. Fucking Sourpuss. I feel like we definitely should be able to at least, you know, talk a little bit, hang out a bit and have some good time without having to worry about that shit. You know what I mean? I'm just, I'm pretty, uh, I'm already upset to that point, right? Uh, so notably, let's get to some shout outs. I want to say Danny the DK, thanks for seven months as a member. Um, there was a $2 tip here that came in earlier, actually before I even turned on my stream, saying I got to at some point check out Dave the Diver. Uh, I've heard things about this game. Some people say... It's a meme game, and the reason people want me to play it is because they claim that the main character looks like me. Uh, I don't know anything about that. I, I've literally never seen the game before, uh, nor do I know what kind of a game it is. I just heard it's an indie game, and I guess it's one of those ongoing survival games or something, I think, but I'm not sure. Uh, I don't know if it would be entertaining for my audience ever, but it, it's definitely something that I might check out eventually because some people have mentioned it. Um, so there you go. And uh, I received a $20 tip. From Dan the Man. Thank you, Dan the Man, for a very generous $20 tip tonight to start off as well. And by the way, oh, I just realized something. Guess what, guys? You're about to see a new animation. This animation has not been played on the stream before because I have new animations now for $10, $20, $30, and $50 levels of tips. This is the first time I'm playing this new $20 animation. Are you ready? Thank you, Dan the Man. Here we go. That's one of the best animations ever made. I, that's hard to top, but I'll tell you right now, for a $50 animation, there's a pretty good one, too. What just happened? Oh. Like, that's not right. That's a good one. Raul Julia, rest in peace. The late, great Raul Julia in his last role. But, uh... The $50 one is really good, too. Let me put it this way. The $50 one is the most over-the-top, ridiculous, funny, embarrassing one that I've probably ever had. 
It's worse than the 30. The $30 one, to give you perspective, the $30 one, I'm dressed up as Chun-Li. Okay? The $50 one is worse. <laughs> but it's funny as shit. We will see it eventually, I'm sure. Probably not tonight, but we will see them all eventually. But thank you, Dan the Man, for that. I appreciate that. Okay. So that's what we got going right now. If any other contributions come in, uh, I will shout them out. And thank you in advance. All right? Now, I will say one thing, because Ace Rob said, you know, when you talk about your detractors and your trolls, it just gives them the attention, and then they... they Listen, they're going to do it anyway. It doesn't matter what I say or do. They do it anyway. They, they invent shit up that doesn't happen on my stream and title their videos that, and then creatively edit to make it look like it happened when it didn't. They do whatever they want. It doesn't matter what I say or do. I'm not a fucking pussy coward who thinks that, oh, I better not say anything because God forbid my trolls might attack me. They do it anyway, so I don't give a fuck about what they do. Do you think I give two flaming turds what the fuck they say about me? They can eat my shit out of my ass with a spoon. <laughs> there you go. I don't give a fuck. I'll say what I want and I'll talk about what I want. And in this case, I needed to talk about it because it's unfortunate because a lot of people were looking forward to fight Kate, including me, and I can't do it now, and it's their fucking fault. So they can eat shit. Antonio, there's absolutely no reason to play arcade mode on fight Kate. If you're not aware, arcade mode in uh, Street Fighter games particularly is awful. It's either way too easy or way too hard. Um, it's not fun in any way, and it doesn't represent real gameplay because the, the computer will cheat at higher difficulties. They don't even have to charge to do charge moves. They will instantly react to your moves. It's just a waste of time. So the only time that I would consider doing that is if, for example, we were doing a marathon of fighting games and I wanted to have a segment of it be a big challenge, like do the highest level difficulty of every arcade game and try to do a run with different characters or something just for fun, then I would consider it. But outside of that, nah, it's just not worth it. It's not going to even be like a fun stream. It's not. The single-player modes of those are not great. So. <clears throat> oh, man. All right. Well, I feel like now we're over a half an hour into this stream. And I feel like I have gotten all the crap off of my chest that I had on my chest. It's disgusting to have crap on your chest, let me tell you. You got to clean it. It smells terrible. All right? But anyway. It's off my chest now. And, uh... <clears throat> and so... Let's now chill, shall we? And just see what you guys want to talk about tonight. Like I said, I at this point, I, I was seriously considering doing something tonight, like gameplay, but I'm just so upset that I don't think that it makes any fucking sense to do it. I'd just be pissy, and it would, it would definitely affect the gameplay in a negative way, and I don't want to do that. That's not fair. That's not fair to the game. That's not fair to the audience. It's not fair to me. It's not fair to anyone. It's just going to be shitty content. So I'd rather just kind of chill. Even if it means that we just shoot the shit for an hour or two and nothing else happens and nothing, you know, I'd just rather do that, okay? I got the drip go. 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 It's like a faucet that's dripping. You can't make it stop. So what do you want me to do? Have a have a mute button that every second I'm tapping the mute button just in case I, I'm gonna have to clear. Like, this is what I mean, these, these dumb kids. This is what it is, it's dumb kids. 